What's up, everyone? I'm Cardi C, the baseball card collector, and on today's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I call it digging through data with a focus on tops, flagship, and update gold parallels. So, as it relates to the baseball collecting hobby, uh, there's nothing that is as big of a staple as the gold parallels. The print runs on these cards go up by one every year, so it provides us with a very stable sort of set of data for us to do an analysis over. And by comparing the PSA pop reports from these gold cards here, these gold parallels to their base counterparts, and looking at things like the border design to try and figure out is it easier or harder to grade a partial or full border? Um, the, the list just goes on and on about the analyses that we can do over, um, over the TOPS flagship set. So today we're going to start off with our lens focused on the gold parallels themselves, but who knows if there is enough interest, we might be taking a look at black parallels and Independence Day parallels and other sort of rare um, parallel sets that Topps has introduced in the last couple years. But before we get into the analysis, first, if you enjoy my content, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to hit that thumbs up to like the video and subscribe for future content. And let's set some ground rules so you guys know where I got this information from. So the first spot that we're going to be grabbing data from is PSA's website. Um, you can just find this by searching PSA pop report on Google and it should bring you to this website. Um, to start, I had just searched for 2019 tops and it has all the sets in here, but we're just gonna be focusing on flagship and update. So here you can see the pop report for every single card that they've created. For 2019 tops, they have 25,247 cards graded, but we just want to focus on the gold parallels. So we can go in here and filter the results by just typing in gold. Um, their website's a little bit laggy, so you just need to be patient. And then here you go. It has each one of the card numbers with the names of the player what card it is, and then your grades going across the top. I couldn't find a clean way to export this data in a modifiable format to Excel. So what I had done to sort of keep my sanity is I had only brought in um, any card that has a pop report of 10 or greater. So 10 or greater, and I was just looking at 8s, 9s, and 10s. There were a limited number of cards that had some, um, some graded 7, but I ignored those for purposes of this analysis. Uh, the other thing I did was I went back to 2010. So Tops had come up with the idea for the gold parallel back in 1992, I believe, as a way to compete with Upper Decks technology. Um, what they're really looking to do is create some scarcity in their product to dr drive some collector um, FOMO, I guess. So they had it for 1992, 93. I think they stopped in 94, 95. Um, they revived it with the 50th anniversary back in 2001. Uh, but for purposes of this analysis, we're just going to look at um, 2010 to present. So 2010 to 2019, TOPS flagship and TOPS update. So here we have two, two graphs. The first is the years of the TOPS flagship and TOPS update series that had full borders and the years that had partial borders. These percentages are showing the percentage of cards, gold parallels, that were submitted and got a PSA Gem Mint 10. So our first insight right off the bat is that it looks like it's easier 
for you to get a gem mint 10 on the years that the design had a partial border 53.37 percent as compared to those years that had a design with a full border which were only coming out at 46.83 percent so that that makes sense right the partial border design is a relatively new concept to tops it's only been in place since 2016 and it's it's a very decisive topic in the hobby uh, like it or hate it it is easier for you to preserve your uh, your edges, your corners, and your centering on the partial border design compared to the full border. Full border design cards are more susceptible to chipping. Um, the centering is a lot more apparent when it's off, and that just makes it harder to find a a nice copy of a nicely centered, nicely non-chipped copy of of those cards. So. There's a lot of insights that we can pull out from this data here, and I thought the best way to sort of get started was to dive into first the partial border stats and then the full border stats. So like we said, the partial border um, design from TOPS really came about in 2016. So we're just going to be looking at 2016, 17, 18, and 19 here. Um, I was interested to see which cards had been graded the most. So we have this card right here, Ronald Acuna Jr., which was grading out at about a 57% gem mint rate. Same thing with Juan Soto. They're almost identical in terms of the number of cards that were graded and the percentage on which they're, they're gem getting gem mint grades. Um... Tatis is not far behind with a slightly higher grade, which was surprising to me because if we look at 2019 tops, um, we see Tatis had 128 gold parallels graded, coming out at a 60% clip for getting a PSA 10. A set that was as condition sensitive as 2019 Series 2 was, this really surprised me for him. Um, you see Alonzo right around 50%. And then you have Eloy here that was only getting a gem mint grade at 37.65%. So again, this might be a little skewed because of a small sample size. There was only 32 cards submitted. But let me know in the comments below if you know anything about this card in particular that might lead you to think that it's more condition sensitive than the rest of the set. So we have the highest and lowest, the Miguel Andujar uh, from, I think this is, yeah, 2018 Top Series 1. 12 of them have been graded out. 10 of them have gotten a PSA 10. So that's the highest percentage and then the lowest is Jordan Hicks, where there's only one copy of the gold parallel that's been graded in a PSA 10. So again, a lot of data here that we could spend a decent amount of time on, but let's take a look at the full border stats. And of course, the icon of the full border bleed cards in a gold parallel is the 2011 update Mike Trout. For the 2011 set, we see that the set as a whole only gems out. Oh, we need 2011 update. The set as a whole only gems out at a 44.46% rate. Now, the, the hobby consensus, or whenever I'm having conversation with people about 2011 tops in general, is that PSA will go grade tougher on cards not named Mike Trout because the the design is so iconic. But when we look at the breakdown here, Trout specifically is grading out at a PSA 10 of 64.33. Now you compare that to the other big name guys of the 2011 design 
Altuve, 40%. Goldschmidt, 49%. If we look at the regular Topps flagship, Freeman, 33%. So there is some truth to this hobby consensus that they grade 2011 tough. But I'm wondering if there's anything behind how they're grading the Mike Trout card itself. Maybe there's pressure to give it a higher grade um, considering it's such a high dollar value card coming in. Um, I don't I don't really know. I, I can't speak to why this card grades out at such a higher clip than the rest of its 2011 counterparts. But this card reigns supreme. Something I thought was interesting was from 2014 Tops update, you have Mookie Betts. 175 gold parallels that have been graded, 63.41% of the total population have gotten a PSA 10. With DeGrom and Springer, right around 67 to 68% behind him for that year. So you see pretty clearly through this data that um, there are some cards that are grading out at a PSA 10 at a much, much higher clip than others. Mookie. Uh, let's go to percentage. And just look at the big ones. Mookie Betts, 63.4%. Nolan Arenado, 50%. Goldschmidt, 49%. So there's... There's... a a lot of interesting questions that pop up here, mainly to having to do with the value of these cards. Does the rate at which these cards grade out in a PSA 10 have any correlation towards their value? And the answer is two hours later. So what I did is I grabbed the average selling price of a base PSA 10 and the average selling price of the gold parallel in a PSA 10. Uh, I calculated a multiplier. So for those of you who aren't familiar with multipliers, you take the average selling price of the base card and then you apply the multiplier um, to try and figure out what the value of the gold parallel should be. Um, the sort of industry standard for TOPS flagship and TOPS update is a multiplier of 5 between the base PSA 10 and the gold PSA 10. And if we just take an average of these multipliers, it's almost right on the, right on the dot. 5.03 is the average. Uh, you see some cards that have a very low multiplier. So this is the 2014 TOPS update. Mookie Betts only had a multiplier of 2.81. If we remember our discussion back on Power BI for the 2019 TOPS update, the Mookie Betts card only graded out or graded out at a 63.41 gem mint rate. So that's really high. That makes a lot of sense why the multiplier is below average because there's a lot of PSA 10 gold cards out in the market um, that are sort of suppressing the upward growth of this card in particular. So uh, next up, we see the 2017 tops update of Cody Bellinger at a 2.88% multi or X multiplier. This is purely a result of the Gary V effect. At the time I'm recording this video, uh, Gary V has pumped Cody Bellinger and the market has responded. A $60 base card is now selling for $200 a piece and the gold PSA 10 counterpart really hasn't had a chance to catch up value wise. So we'll, we'll mark this one off as an outlier and just keep going through the analysis. 2019 tops update, Pete Alonzo is only at a 2.93 X multiplier. Um, this is a card that I think could be undervalued. If you're looking to pick up a 
uh, PSA 10 version of a Topps Gold parallel. His gold cards in a PSA 10 are currently undervalued compared to what his base PSA 10 is selling at. If we flip this multiplier around, we see that you have Soto and Acuna at a 10x multiplier. Their base PSA 10 average is 185 and 110 at the time of this video with their gold average at 10x times that. Um, so I guess the question for these two cards in particular is the base version of this card literally half the value that it should be right now? Or is the hype behind these two prospects just driving the, their gold parallels to unsustainable heights? If I were to take a guess, I would think that both the base and the gold PSA 10 of these cards are going to come back down to earth. Um, one other player that I just wanted to take a look at was Mike Trout. So as we had mentioned, his PSA 10 is grading out, I mean his gold parallels are grading out at a 64% clip. They're currently selling for between 16 and $1,900, which is <laughs> absolutely absurd. It was $500 two years ago, but uh, that's neither here nor there. His gold PSA 10 uh, is $7,000 at his at the last sale for an average multiplier of 3.68. Now, I think that the true value of these Mike Trout gold parallels is closer to a multiplier of 5x, but you have legit investors and collectors that get that card into their collection and they're not going to move it. You don't see very many of these come to market, if at all, and that's why you don't see a multiplier closer to 5x on this card in particular, because it's borrowed away in people's collections or on their mantle in their house. It's the centerpiece of their collections and they aren't going to be getting rid of it in the market anytime soon. So what did we learn today? We are just beginning to scratch the surface on the insights that this type of data can provide us. But in the 20 minutes, half hour, however long you've spent here with me today, um, you've learned that it is a lot easier to get higher grades on partial border designed cards rather than those with full borders. We've learned that Soto, Acuna, and Trout gold parallels are grading out at a much higher clip than their counterparts. And we've also taken a look at the current market prices and the multipliers and confirmed that the gold parallels have about a 5x multiplier on their base counterparts today. So like I said, we're just scratching the surface. You can sink your teeth into this Power BI dashboard in the raw Excel data for hours and hours on end to try and predict out where market prices are going to be, what the future PSA um, grading results will be of these cards and maybe that's what we're gonna do in the future but let me know what you thought about today's video in the comments below I had a lot of fun putting this data together it's a lot of hard work um, doing some manual scrubbing and creating some strong visuals for you um, but it's a way that I like to dissect and ingest information about the hobby in the community till next time I'm Cardi C, the baseball card collector. I'll catch you guys later.